Hello Disney Infinity fans and friends, this is the Bowtie Guy and I'm here with Racket Valve in my second part of the two-part series on how to build an elevator in Disney Infinity. Hey Ralph, stop throwing cherries, we have to start now. Because we do need two dynamic triggers now. So, two dynamic triggers, exactly. And we do need a sound generator. Yep, wonderful. So for each dynamic trigger we do need a locator. One and two. On each locator we do make a locator connection to the corresponding dynamic trigger. Second one, new locator connection to the corresponding dynamic trigger. This way around I think it's way more easier. So on each uh, dynamic trigger um, the target we set to the corresponding locator and the trigger distance I would recommend to set it to 3 because it's for the sliding doors on the uh, elevator. So on the second one uh, we go to the properties again set the target to the corresponding locator and the trigger distance is 3 here as well. So what I need now is a path creator tool uh, for each door uh, a path which is one block wide so this is for the right door and this is for the left door So, and on each path we go to the properties and set it to inactive. A trick I learned from one of JetBlast 190's videos are uh, a thing how to handle automatic doors way more easy. Thank you for that, JetBlast. So, both are inactive. And uh, we did this on the upper door as well. And what we need now is block walls as uh, the sliding doors. So when we do set it to red metal as a style, uh, set it as a theme because we need four of them. So one and two. And two there. So each door we connect do a path connection, go to the path creator tool and topics path. So the second one and go to that. Wonderful. So on the door above uh, path connection See, and when you won't set it, the path tool to inactive, the door would slide back and forth just uh, as they are uh, set it normally. So, but what we do need now is set uh, the four doors. We have to go to the properties of the doors. So, properties, toy box path, and we go down to the movement style instead it to no reverse one way and stop no that one reverse one way and stop in this case when we set the path creator tool to active uh, again the doors won't move unless we are given it a trigger signal so the second one topics path go down to the movement style and go to reverse one way and stop. So now we can set the path creator tool to active again. 
I'll just see if there are any settings there. No. So uh, we can set the path grader tool to active again. And see the door won't move. That's a trick I learned from that video from JetBlast 190. So on the second door, set it to active. Great. So uh, now, uh, since I did this to the other door as well, we can place the locators just in the middle of the two doors. And this second locator to the door on the top. By the way, um, I enhanced the elevator shaft to uh, uh, three blocks uh, a three tall block, uh, one tall, sorry, one tall block higher. So now the tricky part, um, we go to each dynamic trigger when entered by player Annie, and we have to go to each door and do the toy box path and do reverse. And for the second door, new logic connection when entered by player. Any. And we go to the right door and do the Torbex pass and set it to reverse. So the trick is now um, that you have to do it uh, when exited as well. So when exited by player any, we go to each door again, the toy box path, and go reverse. On this case, when you enter the trigger area, the doors open or move, and when you leave the trigger area, uh, the doors move again, close and open. So that's the case here. So second door, Turbox path and reverse. Great. So on each dynamic trigger, we do a new logic connection again and enter it on player any. But now we go to the sound generator and go to general. And we need this computer bleeping blopping sound. Beeping, blopping, yeah, that, that's the right sound I'm looking for. So when entered, no, exited, I'm sorry, when exited by player, Annie, and we choose the same sound again under general on the sound generator, um, and we go for the computer bleeping, blopping sound. And this we do with the second dynamic trigger as well. We go to the sound generator on the general and we're looking for the computer beepling bubbling sound again. So uh, this means when you uh, enter the trigger area the doors open the sound plays and when you leave this trigger area uh, the door closes and the sound plays again so it's more like an opening sliding door so what I need now is to put a path grader tool inside the elevator for the um, elevator platform which goes 
from the ground floor and this is a bit tricky when this is all closed yep this is right on this height wonderful you don't need any more points on that because uh, two points are enough so on the path grader tool for this we go to the properties and we just set the outer start off that's all and again on the uh, elevator platform we do a uh, path create path connection and now it's connected to the path so on the path creator tool new logic connection when let me see point is reached by object on the path you go to the platform and do start no stop I'm sorry stop because the platform has to stop on each point so on the other point when point is reached by object on the path and stop on the uh, platform we set the movement style to back and forth because we want to go up and we want to go down great so uh, for make the platform move we need two trigger areas and I recommend to make it uh, one block deep that fits inside the elevator nicely yeah just write that and the second one yeah one block deep so on each tick area we do a new logic connection when entered by player any and we go to the elevator platform and toolbox the path and start so on the other trigger area new logic connection when entered by player any we go to the platform again and do toolbox the path start so now we can put the trigger areas inside the elevator where we need them just right after the triggering path point yeah just right there and the second one on the first floor where we might exit the elevator wait a minute no that's too high just let me take a look around yeah it has to be flat with this one yeah wonderful great so and I forgot something uh, I put in here two uh, no three more basic plates colored in the same shade of uh, the second floor this checkered thing so and I need uh, a block wall again for no a block ball please yep thank you and the block ball should be colored in uh, the same color as the elevator shaft it's plastic too I want to put this inside the elevator to cover up uh, something that it's even with the elevator doors one here just in the middle of the elevator two elevator doors and three down great wonderful so now we can test out our creation let's see we enter the trigger area the door open we exit the door close the door open sorry guys I'm obsessed with those doors so we go inside the elevator, door closed, and now we enter the trigger area and the elevator is moving.
So, we are on the first floor, yay! So the door closes and here again we can go inside the trigger area and the elevator is moving down. So guys, uh, this was my second part of my two-part series on how to build an elevator. Uh, Racket Rife and I are signing off. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.